Hey y'all, Melissa here with you today, and today I'm going to show you how I made this waterproof, wipeable makeup mat here to protect my surfaces, and it also has one more trick. When I pull the drawstrings, it becomes a makeup bag. So, this makeup bag contains all my makeup, and as you can see, it also is a mat. I have a free pattern to make this, and all the details on how to get that are linked in the description below. So, grab that pattern, meet me back at the camera, and I'll show you how to sew this up. Let's go over the pattern pieces. First, we have the circle template, and that is for the outer and the lining fabric. And you'll notice it has folds on both straight edges. So the way you do that is you're going to fold your fabric once in half horizontally and once in half vertically. And then as you can see, you line up the point with all those folds and you cut the other edge. And then when you unfold, you'll have your circle. You do also want to transfer the marking for the button welt placement. You want to do that once on the top half and then you want to do it once on the bottom half. I find it's easier if you press a line in your fabric that you can line up to on your halfway points. I am using a lightweight canvas for the outer fabric of mine and for the lining fabric of mine I am using a nylon fabric that is waterproof on one side. In addition to those pieces, you're going to need to cut out the button welt pieces. So I used my pinking shears to cut these out and that gives it these scalloped edges. You don't have to do that, that is an optional step and I have the pinking shears so I just did that. It helps prevent some fraying. On your buttonhole welts on the back side, you're going to want to mark your stitching line. So I cut my stitching line out of my pattern piece and then I take my washable marker and mark it on there. And you do need to do that on both pieces. And then you also need to cut two pieces of the outer fabric for the flap that we're going to be making. And then finally, you're going to need a two inch piece of hook and loop tape or Velcro. And you're going to need two two yard long pieces of ribbon for the drawstrings. So the first thing we need to do on this project is to make those buttonhole welts. And these are where we are going to be pulling the drawstrings through later. So you're going to want to line up your piece with your markings and then you are going to stitch that buttonhole. So I'm holding this in place with just a couple of pins. They are right sides together. And just double check and make sure that when you fold your pattern in half that your two buttonhole welts are directly opposite each other. So you can move them around at this point but once these are stitched in you can't move them. So I'm going to take this over to the machine now and then I'm going to stitch right on that stitching line that I marked. Once you've stitched around that square, then you're going to use the point of your scissors and you're going to snip into the middle of it and then snip out towards the corners. Make sure you do not snip through the stitching. Then we're going to push that fabric through the hole that we just made so that it comes out here on the wrong side like so and then we're going to take this over to the ironing board and we're going to press all along those edges so this will be flat. Then I'm going to stitch again right around the buttonhole. Okay, so here is my little buttonhole welt after I have stitched around it. And I'm gonna trim the extra little threads here just so those don't come out of the hole. And then I'm going to set this aside and we're going to work on the flap for a minute. So the first thing I wanna do is separate my hook and loop tape. 
And I want to sew one piece of it. I prefer the scratchier piece. I'm gonna sew this to the end of my flap here. And I wanna keep it away from the edges because those are gonna get sewn to the other piece. So I'm gonna put it approximately there and stitch that in place. Once you've sewn that edge of the hook and loop tape on, we're gonna take the two pieces and we're gonna put them right sides together and we're going to stitch around the edge, leaving a gap in the bottom to turn this. Here's what this looks like stitched. I'm going to clip these corners and clip the curve. And then I'm going to turn this right side out. Then I'm going to press these raw edges towards the inside and I'm going to press this whole thing flat before I attach it to the back. Here is the piece pressed and the next step is going to be to take my outer fabric here I'm going to put it wrong side up and I'm going to fold the two buttonholes in towards each other make sure that they're centered so I kind of just gave myself a crease line and there we go making sure those are centered I want to take my other piece of velcro put it on one side of one buttonhole and then I want the flap to connect to that and overlap evenly onto the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin here where I want my flap to go. And I'm gonna disconnect it from the other side of my hook and loop tape here. And pin that in place to sew as well. So turning this over right side up, I want to sew around the edges of my hook and loop tape on this side. And then I want to sew like a box around the end of this flap to hold it in place. So here's what that looks like once these are sewn on. And now I want to fold this flap out of the way and I want to place the lining and the outer fabric right sides together. And I want to pin these in a few places around the edges just to make sure that my fabrics are not walking as I stitch. Now I want to stitch around the entire edge. I do want to leave a gap in the stitching to turn this right side out at some point around the circle. And I'm going to use a 1 quarter inch seam allowance here even though I've been using a 1 half inch seam allowance in other places like the flap. Okay, here you can see my stitching and I left a gap right here. So I'm going to turn this right side out. And then I want to give this a quick press all along the edges and I want to make sure that at my gap here that the edges get pressed and pinned in towards the inside. Once this is pressed, then I need to top stitch all the way around the edges and that will also close up this gap. So we're on the final couple of steps. Now we have to create the drawstring casing and we're going to make it just wider than this buttonhole here that we have made. So I want to stitch just above and just below in a circle all the way around. And I'm going to be using my machine guides on the throat plate to help me keep this lined up. If you don't have those, you can also draw on your seam lines with fabric marker or chalk. So here is my casing and I want to put my needle in the center and then I'm actually going to line up the casing edge right here with the edge of my presser foot right here 
So what you can see what happens is this edge of my presser foot ends up lined up with my fabric. So I'm just going to keep the edge of my presser foot lined up with my fabric and that will be my first stitching line. Now that I've gone around once, I want to make sure I'm stitching on the other side. There's the other end of my buttonhole. Hopefully you can see that there. And so if I look on my throat plate here, there is a line out here that I'm going to keep lined up to as I stitch. For the final step here, I'm going to use this tool, which is called a bodkin, to thread my drawstrings through my casing. So to use this, I'm going to clamp it down on the end of the ribbon and push this little circle to hold it tight, and then I'm sticking it in my buttonhole on this side. I'm going right past the buttonhole on the other side. I want to come back out the same one I started with. Okay, I want to get my ends of ribbon even, pulled out of the hole evenly, and then I want to knot them together. And this end is a little bit frayed. I'm going to cut it before I knot these. There we go. Now I want to do the same thing, but I want to start on the other side this time. Be careful not to get tangled when you come to the other buttonhole side. And then same thing, you want to even out your ribbon ends on this side. To prevent further fraying on these ribbon ends, if you are using a polyester or a nylon fabric, you can apply some heat to the ends very carefully with a match or a candle or a lighter, and that'll melt those fibers together so they won't fray anymore. But they won't fray past the knot anyway. Once you have both drawstrings in, then here is the makeup side of your mat, and you can pull on your drawstrings, and it will scrunch it up into a bag where you can tuck those drawstrings in and use the flap to keep this securely closed. And there we go, there is our finished makeup bag. Check out this playlist for more quick gifts that you can sew, including other bag ideas, as well as fun gifts for everyone on your list.